Hey everyone, in today's video we are going to diagnose and hopefully repair this Pioneer SX535. So for those of you who have subscribed to my channel you will know that I got this receiver in exchange for a beer. Thank you so much for watching that video. If you're new to my channel please consider subscribing if this is stuff you're interested in. So to start the video I'm going to put this camera on my head and I'm going to show you exactly what's going on with this receiver. So you know the receiver looks good. I plugged it in. All of the uh, all the lights work here. The stereo light works. The only thing that doesn't work is the uh, tuner pointer light, but that's an easy fix. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go hook up a speaker. This wire here goes to that speaker. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to connect the one wire just for uh, demonstration purposes. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to just kind of drag this wire across this terminal and I'll show you what happens. You hear that? Can you see those sparks? I don't think the camera can pick up the spark, but uh, yeah, my test speaker, there's, there's some very loud noise coming from that, and that is not okay. So what's going on, if I take the voltmeter here, I'm going to put these across the uh, speaker terminal, is we have about 14 volts DC going across the speaker terminal. Uh, this is extremely bad. You do not want any DC voltage at all going across the uh, speaker terminal. So something in this amplifier is uh, not working right and this video is going to show what it is and the proper fix for it. So let's talk about the SX535 for just a minute. The SX535 uses a DC coupled power amplifier that produces 20 watts per channel RMS into 8 ohms. And just by looking at this amplifier, I know that it is DC coupled because I see two filter capacitors right here. So here's the biggest issue with the SX535. The power amplifier has no protection circuit anywhere. There's no speaker relay. All you have is these fuses. Obviously, there's way too much DC coming out of this right now, but there's no relay to catch it, and these fuses aren't blowing. So that's kind of an issue. So, how does a DC coupled power amplifier regulate the DC going to the speakers? It uses something called a differential pair. Now a differential pair is two identical transistors that are a matched pair, meaning they have equivalent gains, they've been checked to make sure they have the same gain, and they make sure that DC stays at zero volts. You can see that on the schematic here that I've got on the screen. So if I had to guess what's wrong with this amplifier, I'd probably guess that it is the differential pair transistors on each channel. But I don't know that for a fact. I still don't know anything about what's actually going on in this power amplifier board. I don't even know if it is the power amplifier board. So the first thing I'm going to do is check the preamplifier for DC voltage coming into the power amplifier. Because we need to find out where in the signal path this DC voltage is originating from. So I've checked the schematic and I know that the place where the signal first meets the power amplifier board is on pin 3 for the left channel and pin 5 for the right channel. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my voltmeter, I'm going to measure the voltages at pin 3 and 5 to ground and see if there's any bad stuff going on from the preamplifier out. Let's turn the receiver on and let's take a look at what's coming out of the preamplifier. So I put this on pin 3 and I see that there is minimal DC voltage coming out. Pin 5, same deal, no DC voltage coming out. So we know that the power amplifier is where the DC is coming from. So there I was, starting to check for voltages at the differential pair, seeing if there was zero volts at the base of Q3 and Q4. I found 33 volts DC at Q4, but when I checked Q3, I found something very interesting. Okay, so here's what just happened. I've just been fiddling with this thing, you know, trying to figure out what's going on, and then I started checking voltages over here again, and though you just saw me earlier, I checked the uh, voltage at the speaker terminal. And it was, you know, like 14, 15 volts, and now it's zero. I haven't done anything. I have not changed a thing. And, uh, heck, I'll even show you. I'll turn the volume up on the radio here, and I'll show you that it plays music. Not well, but, uh, there's, there's sound coming out of it now. But, uh, like I showed you before, 
This one, you know, same bad issue with the DC. This is the best part about fixing electronics, is when stuff is intermittent or, you know, comes and goes. The cars are the same way. So, here's what I'm going to do. What I'm going to do is I'm going to start by replacing the differential pair transistors on each channel, just because that's good practice anyways. You know, Pioneer is known to have used kind of junky, noisy transistors in their power amplifiers in this era. So, that's how I'm going to start this. I'm going to replace Q1 through 4 with a KSA 992 transistor. We're going to take each of those, and that's going to go in one amp. And then we look again. Nothing too close here. Let's look at another let's look at another piece of tape here. We have a 396 and a 396. So we'll do those over here on this channel. I'm putting on my safety glasses. You can kind of see like a triangular pattern in these pins here. Let's give this one a try. Yep, got it. Okay, let's get these new guys soldered in here. Okay, so here's our old transistors. Get this out of the way. Um, I don't know if this is going to have fixed it, so... Because all the transistors I pulled tested okay. So I don't really know what to expect here. Um, I'm not going to use the dim bulb because I wasn't involved with the outputs or the filters. So let's plug this in. Let's turn this on. Okay. No smoke. Now let's check for uh, DC voltage at our uh, speaker terminals again. Let's see if anything's different. So, one, no, nothing different. And this one fixed itself still. So, okay, so that tells us that the differential pairs were fine. Uh, I did not need to replace those transistors and that the issue is somewhere else. So the next transistor that I would uh, want to look at now is the bias transistor. There's a certain transistor that the SX636 uses for the bias transistor, and that transistor is known to fail and cause, uh, you know, what we're seeing in the speakers right now. Um, this receiver does not use that transistor, but I'm, well, what I'm going to do is I'm going to look at the service manual. I'm going to find the bias transistor on this board, and I'm going to see if I've got the direct replacement for it. Then I'm going to swap those out, and that might be our ticket to fixing it, just based on previous experience with the different receivers. So, let's see. So when we look at the SX535 service manual, we see that the bias transistors are Q5 and Q6. Next, we need to look at the PCB foil diagram to see which one is Q5 and Q6 on the board, because Pioneer did not mark component designators on their boards. We see that they are right here. So now I know to look right there on my actual receiver and pull those transistors. But what do I replace that transistor with? Well, let's go on Audio Karma. Let's look at this thread that somebody started where they listed a bunch of transistor replacements. And we see that a good replacement for the 2SC1318 is a KSC2690. Luckily, I have some of those in my drawer. So I'm going to swap those out right now. Okay, let's... I only did the one channel since this is the channel that was giving us trouble, so let's try this again. We'll hook up to ground and we'll take our probe, we'll see what's going on here. Shoot, would you look at that? I'm not seeing any uh, DC voltage at any of the speakers. So it looks like replacing the bias transistor on this board did the trick. So, let's get the other one replaced since it was exhibiting the exact same issue. And uh, what's crazy about this is, you know, here's the old transistor. I just tested this. It checked out just fine on my uh, DCA55. So, okay, we've got both bias transistors replaced. We have the differential pair transistors replaced also, even though that wasn't our problem. That's still a good thing to replace as a maintenance item at this point, you know. It's been 50 years since this was built. Um, so now let's take a moment and let's hook up some speakers. 
Okay, so we've got speakers hooked up. I don't hear anything. We'll turn up the volume. We've got sound. Muting is on. We've got NPR. That's great. Let's break out the aux cable and see if it, you know, sounds okay. static in there so there it is everyone that is uh, that is what it took to fix this uh, Pioneer SX 535 so in conclusion we saw heavy DC voltage at the uh, speaker terminals and my first thought as uh, you know someone who has limited experience working on these is that the differential pair might be bad so I replaced the differential pair it didn't fix it and then based on my additional experience, I pulled the bias transistor because I've seen bad bias transistors on Pioneer SX636s do what was being done on uh, this receiver. So once I replaced the bias transistors with a uh, KSC2690, which is a good replacement for the uh, 2SC1318, that took care of it. And now we've got a working receiver. All it needs is, uh, all it needs now is the controls cleaned, and uh, then it would, I'd basically give it a good bill of health and say it's ready to go. Oh, and I also gotta check the amplifier bias. But uh, I will be restoring this because this is a H fix it, and I just H fixed this one, but you know, it'd be a shame not to restore this receiver since it's here. You know, so that's it. Thank you so much for watching. Thank you to all the subscribers, new and old, and I'll see you in the next video.